Yeah. All right. So the first question that we have here, and I think we can go over the questions that you sent, um, is progress tracking. Right. Should we maybe start with progress tracking? Could you please elaborate uh, what you mean by progress tracking? What kind of tracking okay. are you talking about? So uh, this is the, uh, the biggest question that I have with my practice it always, and I still don't have an answer to it. Uh, I normally work with the students with higher levels. Yeah. Where you, like, when they come to you, you don't really have, um, like, a clear path of, okay, we need to go through this, this, because when you have a beginner, you know, okay, we need to go through the tenses, we need to go through this, and when you're done, you're like, you take it off, and you're like, we, we did this. It's easy to see what result you achieved. When I have a C1 student, basically, we just talk, and uh, I give them feedback on their mistakes at the end. And we are trying to like to work on the smaller mistakes. Maybe we can make a, a like a class at the um, in the next class. We will, uh, you know, uh, one recurring mistake. I will turn it into a class and we will work on it. But basically, it's just speaking. That's why it's uh, they don't really feel uh, that big of a progress because basically they already are somewhere at the top. So the progress is like we're going from ninety percent to ninety one percent, which is really small. So I don't know how to like what to do to show them that they actually progressed other than saying, see, now you're not making this mistake or see, now you're speaking more fluently or something. How to maybe, I don't know, visualize this progress. But again, without making it like an extra task for myself that will take three extra hours every week just to show them like what they did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I get it. Thank you. That's a good question. Sveta, do you maybe have some suggestions or a possible answer for this? Uh, about progress track, like uh, honestly speaking, I uh, I've taught only once using Amazi, and uh, I think um, so. I need more experience with this, but I think Amazi provides uh, great opportunities to track because uh, all the materials are saved in students' folder, <laughs> as you told me, and. Uh, Maybe in terms of progress, it's for uh, Lilia. What's her name? Yeah, you can call me. Yeah. You can call me Lily. Uh, maybe uh, Lilia can just create her own tables and demonstrate it. Um, uh, tables and rubrics. Let's say um, based on the needs of the students, he wants. Let's say he wants to see the progress on his speaking. Yeah, you say, oh, uh, good job. You used this idiom today and you just uh, mark give the point but for yourself and then at the end of let's say months you show him this table yeah but, and the, uh, let's say the idiom you were talking about let's say um, during the first lesson on amazing mm -hmm. it's about yeah, it again it just tracks like um oh i don't know with vocabulary it's quizlet I, I have their cards in Quizlet and just to see okay. what phrases you learned, you just open your Quizlet and see how much, how many words you know right now. I I mean, yeah, maybe it could be possible, but for me, it looks like extra work that's repeating the same thing. Like I just copy the phrase from Quizlet, put it in a different table and just add a tick next to it. Oh, great. You used it. I'm not sure that it's, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. If it's conversation, maybe, uh, maybe time them up. If it's a monologue, let's say uh, he he did speak, let's say more than two minutes. Also, you can use the timer to show that. That's an idea. Because with this, like, let's say, I don't know uh, when you discuss any topic, you say uh, you. Uh, you don't uh, let's say you don't um, you don't mention that you will time him up but then at the end just to show his progress you say oh you know what uh, like um, I was timing you up and I can see like there is a real uh, progress because you know uh, spend more time expressing your ideas or using useful phrases and so on and you just show this table 
it's a good it's, it's a good thing because all the exams all the exams they usually set the time uh, let's say i not all the exam cambridge i'm talking about cambridge exams uh for students they say talk at least about two, two minutes on this topic yeah same for ielts mm -hmm. and i think all, all the exams yeah i think all of them are like this so yeah, are you a timer or in terms of idioms or different expressions yeah like uh, can you just give an example when you say uh, progress or conversation for example what do you mean so uh like 90 percent of my students or when they come we get we, we make this uh interview in the beginning and i'm asking what uh, what are your goals like in three months what do you want to achieve or in yeah, one yeah, year yeah. what do you want to achieve yeah. and most of them say i want to be more confident when i'm speaking and it's impossible to quantify it like now you're the only way i can check it is do you feel more confident right now so that's why i every class i will ask them how did you use your english in the last week how what were the situations how did you feel what were the problems um, and only that helps me to sort of track their progress. But then if they don't practice it outside of class, how do I, like, there is no way of checking how their uh, confidence confidence went up because, of course, they are going to feel more confident speaking I, to me. I think Amazi is also a great idea and has a great tool for this, This the which the recorder one, no, Palin, can you tell yes, about? Yes, we have, we have a voice recorder tool there to, to use. So maybe let's brainstorm on the ideas for how she can use the recorder. Yes. Um, the recorder, you can set the time or no? uh it doesn't you don't need to set the timer because the recorder actually get, tells you how much okay. you've been talking but then uh, the student the, the it will be saved for the student no that yeah. all the recordings so it yeah means maybe just um after let's say a month you studied a month and then uh you just go through the recordings and say how, let's have a look how it was before you can even save the recording to your computer and then paste it as an audio file later to a, to a lesson. So basically, what uh, ex if I extrapolate on what you've suggested, if you have um, a, a speaking task with a question and the student records their answer, you can uh, ask them the same question sometime later, and then you can ask them to compare how they have how they answered at first and how they answered now and same can go for writing uh if you practice writing skills which i always recommend like writing skills are um they transfer to like speaking. significant for speaking yes mm -hmm. because they uh they help students try out new things and it's so much more um it's so much easier for them to do that in writing than in speaking but then that extrapolates on speaking as well so yeah um right so you could do that um yeah basically it will be really good if it will be the same topic but a, a little bit changed let's say yeah i like this idea like 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 like, like like you know like when you're experimenting when you are doing the pre-test and then you do the post-test so it's like before you start uh before you start the topic and then after the topic which is the same Maybe it could be the same question, but a little bit uh, d differently expressed. Mm -hmm. so then you you have two uh, recordings to uh, compare, and it's not like extra job for you. I mean, it's not like uh, you know uh, keeping the track somewhere, somewhere where, uh, in other platform or in the table. Yeah. I mean. <coughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That could be a way. I do use Telegram voice no notes for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And have you tried the um, speech to text of Telegram? Um, it requires premium subscription to use. Yeah. I don't have premium, so I haven't oh. used it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. It's just uh, a gamble. Um, it, 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 it is like uh, anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe. I I actually use CapCut for that. Oh, I see. It auto-generates oh, subtitles. 
I use CapCut for many things to voice uh, the text. So it's a perfect text to speech generator. If you haven't tried it, let me show you. It's really great. No, no, um, I use it for Instagram, but I haven't used it for my work. I will try. Think of, okay, let me show you how you can use it for work because mm -hmm. it's really ingenious. So basically what you do is you just take some random picture. I'll use a picture of my friend. I hope she doesn't mind. So you add a picture and then you also need to add text. It doesn't matter what kind of picture it is. So you add the text that you want to voice. Let's say I will choose some text that I have somewhere maybe let's say this text right mm -hmm. so you have it here on the right and then you have this here text to speech and i think we talked about it last time oh no we talked about it uh, at star creators meeting with svetlana yes yes so basically uh here you have a lot of different voices you can choose from and they have fantastic voices so they have this i really like this one interactive lessons where they can click right and play with materials see mm -hmm. the progress eat oh wait euphoric i don't remember what it is and they even have like interactive <laughs> <laughs> Oh so God. they can uh, make songs. And if you teach kids, they have this kids vocalist and kawaii vocalist. So kawaii vocalist <laughs> is the perfect one for kids. So basically, of course, the text that you write has to be has to be like <laughs> easy to sing. Not what I pasted, it, but. Interactive yeah. lessons where they can click write. And this one is not so Interactive good. Interactive lessons where they can click, write and play with materials. And you can create whole dialogues here basically by, so you have the first text here, the second text you paste here, and you can voice them by different um, voices there, male mm -hmm. and female. And then when you save it, you don't need to save the video. You only export audio. Hold on, why is that? Oh, because I did not. Okay, so basically you choose the voice. I didn't finish it. So you choose the voice you want to uh, to use. Let's use gener energetic female. They can click, right? and you convert it into an audio and then you can save the whole thing as an audio and use in your lesson. So that's even, you know, it's it's a great feature that mm -hmm. many people know and it's really cool it's a free text-to-speech generator which has a lot of different voices and they sound pretty natural some of them sound pretty natural and you can create whole dialogues this way mm -hmm. so you click export and that's it you have an mp3 file i've used it in my museum's lesson and it was fantastic like it's really great noise have you ever tried it with uh when the student sends you some audio and you turn it into yeah. text? yeah yeah i did i did the only problem is that it's hard to then convert it to like just text because it's captions it creates yeah. captions and then you can copy the captions and then you have to spend some time you know putting it together into text if you need to but if mm -hmm. you don't need that if you just need to see what they've said maybe to copy some things and paste it into the feedback then it's fine like it's mm -hmm. it's very quick so we might add that to the platform uh, a bit later. Like we are working on introducing some AI features to the platform and AI assistant, and that might also be there as well. So mm -hmm. that probably will be um, one of the features of the thing. Hello, uh, Alona. <laughs> Sorry, we were in the middle of the thing. I, I could not interrupt. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm okay. And I just want, was wondering which question you were discussing. Right. So we were discussing progress tracking. Here it is, the first one. So basically the problem that we have here is it's high, hard to quantify progress for higher levels. And these are the two ideas we've had so far. So maybe you can suggest something. So if I can elaborate on that, when you have lessons with high levels, often it's it, and it's not directed at passing an exam you will have a lot of speaking lessons you correct the vocabulary you correct the minor grammar mistakes but it's really hard to track the progress they have because the higher you get 
you know, the slower it is. So it's practically um, untangible, like you can't visualize mm-hmm. it or quantify it some way. So what are some ways to do that? So we've had two ideas. What amazing do you gain share do you have? Are we talking about adults or teenagers? Um, adults. adults, yeah. Oh, adults, okay. So yeah, I heard what Lilith, right, was uh, explaining. And uh, they want to be more confident. Then you need to ask the question, where you want to be more confident? More confident doing what? Speaking. Okay, where are you going to speak? To my friend. Okay, what are you discussing with your friend? Is this friend, uh, I don't know, a German person? Is this friend an American person? Is this friend Poland person? Uh, or I need it at work. Okay, okay, what are you doing at your work? What are you talking about? Mm, I want to be more confident when I'm watching films. What kind of films are you watching? Are you watching TV series? Are they British, American, Irish? Blah, blah, blah. I want to be more confident when I'm reading. Okay, what kind of literature are you reading? So when we're doing needs analysis, the thing is we're doing it too, com- too uh, general. You need to get to the point and understand where they want it. Because yes, students always say, I want to speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you want to speak about? Where are you going to speak? Because this way you know what functional language this person needs, what vocabulary, what grammar this person needs. So you can create a list and then you can work on it. So you can create a list, put it on Excel file, for example, shared file, and it could be your student's reflection. So for example, they want to be more confident for example, discussing the latest uh, Bruce Willis movie, for example. So you you know that you need to teach them how to deal with reviews, how to express their own opinion, how to give recommendations, how uh, and uh, vocabulary they need and grammar they need for this. So you make a list of it. And for example, when you take one topic, second topic, third topic, you ask your students to reflect on it, like what they learned in this topic. And they need to write, if we are talking about vocabulary, they can write exact words or phrases they know already. They can create text with this. If they, we are talking about grammar structures, then they have to use it in a voice message, for example, they can record it. Well, not Excel, right? We can use Amazi for all of this. And they can record their uh, speech using all these structures. So you can use KWL chart. I've spoken about it in one of the amazing masterminds. So I know, I want to know, I learned. And for example, on this topic, we can talk that I know this, especially for high levels, they know a lot. So when we're talking about, I don't know, conditionals, what do I know about conditionals? And they write it. What I would like to know about conditionals and there are a lot of exceptions and we have mixed conditionals, right? And we have inverted conditionals. And when you finish the topic, so they have to fill in the column learned. So they, what they learned. And this can be done uh, by themselves as a reflection homework tool. And I really like this article I downloaded from ELT journal where they made a research and they implemented reflection and journaling as homework for students for different levels. I can send it to Paulina, for example, and she can attach it. And uh, that was very interesting because for the first week it was difficult for them. And on the third week, students already started asking questions, how can I learn this? And they were researching themselves. So this uh, reflection tool was, they were researching it as uh, promoting students' autern- autonomy, learners' mm-hmm. autonomy, and it really helped. Yeah, so you just need to get to the point of things, and then you can measure it. And of course, you can c- do video recording of them speaking, and you can use uh, extra um, software because when you record on Zoom, they they know they're being recorded, and they are shy, and they start yes. Um, using wrong words. everything changes as soon yeah. as you, yeah so you can do that discreetly uh either use a separate uh software which records the whole screen or you can put your phone for example i have uh, like this uh, tripod here and when i my phone i just hide it <laughs> so they don't see it 
or, or I put, can put it close right here, but I turn it up so they don't see it. And you can record just, I don't know, three, four minutes of them speaking, and then mm -hmm. in months again, and then show them two of those. You can put them on CapCut one by one or an Amazie as well. And they can see their own progress. So yeah, it's one and reflection as well. Yeah, like, what do you know? Because one of my students says, I don't know anything. Again. Okay. What did we learn last month, last week? What do you know about this topic? Which phrases do you use? And uh, one more thing is for you as a teacher to notice a lot of things they use. So usually we correct mistakes, but notice the words they used from your previous lessons. And um, I don't know, sometimes don't correct at all, only positive, show them only positive and what they've used. And also uh, learn them, promote their skill. I don't know what to call that. So they have, they notice what they use and they notice new structures themselves in films and in books, so articles. So when they start noticing new structures, new words, for them, it's like, oh, I learned it. I know what it means and I see it. So mm -hmm. it also shows them that there is a progress there. I hope I wasn't speaking too much to fast. No, no, it was very useful. Idea. I did think about like self-reflection and all of that stuff, uh, but it depends on the personality of the student. Some of them, like some of them just don't uh, do homework at all. Like we agreed in the beginning that I have time only for classes. So that would mean that um, I would have to spend time, like two classes would go out, out of a pack. One class would be like the needs analysis. And then the last class in the pack would be like, let's see what we've learned, but why not? Could yes, be. but that can be done in the lesson form. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to make it a questionnaire. It's like a revision. It's like the beginning mm -hmm. of the revision. Needs analysis has to be done. It can be half of the lesson. Why not? Yeah. 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 So you can do it during a lesson. You don't have to do well, the whole lesson. You can devote five minutes of each lesson for different skill. Why mm -hmm. not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I fully um, agree. The ideas are really good. And I also wanted to say about proper needs analysis. Sometimes we don't do that enough with our students. Like they don't really know what they wanted for. So we have to help them get there. Um, I shared this questionnaire um, in the community some time ago that I used with my student and it really boosted his motivation because he kind of lacked some proper goals. So we went over this. And um, because he's lower level and because he doesn't really know what he wants and I, he wanted to do it at home, I gave him options instead of open questions. So uh, like what he said, what motivates you? I want to read. What exactly do you want to read? So basically here I tried to get that with options and um, it was really successful. We got to the root of what he needed English for exactly, what kind of specific skills he needed to practice what kind of specific vocabulary he really needed now and we will focus on that and I can already see the results that he is very motivated and he's eager to to study and that works you might check it out it maybe some something is in there yeah. every student <laughs> I also... is unique I'm sorry just to, to finish every student is unique so you'll need just to create your own questions for their interests. Yeah. And I, ha I have a short podcast where I talk about how to deal, how to analyze the needs. So you can also listen to it and maybe it also will give you more ideas and you add Paulina's minds and you will have the best needs analysis. <laughs> I also have a list of questions that I ask. First, I ask them, in the, I will send them in the chat just if you mm -hmm. want to look at them. Where is it? Um, I I used it be, before that. I used it as an interview for potential students to understand if I want to work with the student or not, and if they want to continue. Uh, but now I just I turned it into a questionnaire. It's not very organized, but anyway, I'll just send it. Mm -hmm. um, and it works and it takes like probably 40 minutes to talk about all of that and they're like oh okay let me think I haven't thought of that some of them are quite deep some of them are just for me to understand what the student needs 
in terms of the format of the class. Okay, can I yeah, comment I could... on them? Sorry? Can I comment on them? Sure, go ahead. For example, the third question, sometimes they don't know themselves. You need to help them with this one. The, the way I ask this question, it's not exactly that. I ask it, imagine um, in three months, like if we start working with you and uh, we work for three months, imagine your feelings uh, or your results, what do you want to feel or see or be able to do so that you know that these three months were productive and you want to continue. And then the same thing for, for a year. Like imagine what yourself in a month. So these are just to, for me to remember what I want to ask but they try to formulate them so that they are able to actually answer it, that they are not very abstract. Mm -hmm. For, for long-term goals, they do a very similar thing, but it's more uh, visual, I guess. I ask them to imagine a situation where they suddenly realize that they can speak English or that they have sort of like, they know English or they have learned it. I don't know. So uh, everybody has this kind of a point in their mind where they kind of will get it and they know what the point is. So I try, I ask them to imagine this, what will give them this feeling that, oh my God, I know English. And uh, I ask them to close their eyes and imagine this situation in as many details as possible. What are they doing? Where are they? It's like a sort of psychological trick, but it gives me the idea why they're learning English. I had a student who said, I'm sitting in a chair reading John Keats' book of poems, and I understand all the metaphors, and I understand all the words. Like that's He wanted to use English for literature, for, for reading, for fun, basically. Another student said, well, I am having an interview with uh, like in a Dutch company, and uh, they are they're giving me an offer. And okay, so you want it for work. You actually want to relocate. They don't. They might not even understand it, but by having this kind of visualization of a situation, you get this. And this can be the long-term goal, but of course it's not a short-term one. And so then we kind of like say, okay, this is where we're heading. We give maybe an approximate uh, amount of time for us to get there, depending on their level and how much I think we will mm -hmm. spend on it. But uh, it gives them th something. And then I do a funny thing. I create a picture for them. So I find a picture on the internet with this image that is similar to it. And maybe I attach their face to it. Or maybe I create a little dialogue. So like, hello, Arkady, welcome to the company or something like that. And <laughs> I paste it to the first lesson and they always have it. I sometimes open it and see, I, you've forgotten where, why we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice idea. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything to add? Uh, have we answered your question? Would you like to talk about it more? No, I think that's a lot to process and to try out. And if uh, the article, you will paste it into this uh, class also. Like yeah. this... Can you can you send it now? So I sent I... it to Paulina's private messages on Telegram. I don't know. Ah. Where to... uh, where... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'll I'll find it now. In Zoom, you can send it. Uh, no, no, it's fine. If you send it, yeah, I see it. I see it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm downloading. I will paste it here. Um, one more thing I might add: if we talk about higher level students and like the way they speak and how hard it is to gauge the way they speak, as I, I usually explain to them that when you want to speak, uh, like a native, like some of them say, I want to speak like a native speaker, and I. I don't want to demotivate them, but I usually say you you will never be able to speak like a native speaker. And I I don't speak like a native speaker. You have to be a native speaker to speak like a native speaker. So that's not going to be possible. But what you want is fluency and accuracy. And I explain to them what fluency is and what accuracy is and how we can measure it. And then everything we've discussed basically can show them how their accuracy has progressed. You can basically record them and count how many mistakes they make. Mm -hmm. right or, and how many interesting collocations they use if we talk about advanced that's about collocations right it's yeah. about you know idioms phrases phrasal verbs collocations you can actually count them in their answers and then instead of just listening and comparing you know oh it sounds better mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. can actually say so here you used five collocations and here you used none here you made three grammar mistakes and here you made 10, something like that, right? So you can actually make it the progress tangible this way by talking about fluency and accuracy. Yep, that's also a nice idea. I'm all about 
want to find something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> numbers so it works for me I see. Mm -hmm. all right um well that is done Congratulations on the first question covered. <laughs> um, let's see what we have. The next one, the way we can use images on Amazie. Again, Sveta, could you please explain your question? What do you mean? It's getting noisier here, so I am unmuted myself. But no, I was just uh, thinking about maybe we can brainstorm how can we use images in uh, Amazie. Because last time during our um, during our session, amazing star se creator star session, you came up with a really good idea where you can actually um, uh, copy and paste the images on one on the worksheet, and then the kids can um, the kids can match the numbers and the images. Maybe you have some more ideas. <laughs> okay. Them. Okay. Let's see. Let's see we can brainstorm that. Uh, so what we talked about, if I remember correctly, is that if you add pictures to the lesson like that, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I just have some some <laughs> inspiration, <laughs> uh, something that I'm going to sew, um, the pictures here. So if you paste them like this, it's a very long scroll down thing. And then if you want them to do anything with the pictures, they will have to go up and down, up and down, yeah. which is not really useful. Um, unfortunately, this is how it is for now on the platform. Um, we will make it better in the future, but for now, this is what we're dealing with. Uh, so what we discussed, I'm just explaining to the girls that um, it's better to create like a collage uh, of pictures that is horizontally stretched, not vertically stretched. So open Canva, open Snapper, actually Snapper. I use it if I want to do something quickly. Uh, it's a very simple app. Um, very much like uh, Canva, but it has mu <laughs> much fewer options for design. But this is why it's so um, like easy to use. It's much easier to use than Canva. So you open like a template and then I sometimes will simply paste pictures here. like this, and then I just place them, you know, one next to another and save it. And then, then this is automatically much easier to use on Amazie this way. You can add uh, numbers one or two to it and then you add it here and it's already easier to use this way. Um, how else we can use images? Okay, so maybe you have ideas. Images for lessons or images for in, in for lessons in in on Amazie in the lesson. You can put like again, or you will have to do it somewhere else and then paste it. Like making charts, if you have, like, if you are studying body parts, put um, uh, a picture and then numbers around this picture. Just put the numbers on the picture and then below an exercise where they have to like label the picture. Like, put the number. Number one is I don't know nose. Yeah. Shape. So basically, like this one. Here it could be close, like skirt. Two. Two, three and then mm -hmm. like this I think Canva is easier for this <laughs> than Snapper but Snapper is possible to use no it's horrible <laughs> it's horrible for this particular task I mean Snapper but uh, yeah it is easier to do on Canva yeah like this mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's another thing. Well, you can uh, again. You've already used the upload thing, so uh, create. Let me let me write some ideas. Lages and um, number pictures. Um, 
create a chart with numbered objects to name. I don't know. Three, what else can it be? Upload, uh, ask students to upload their pictures. Can they upload their pictures? Well, it's a loophole. Uh, yeah. um, basically, we have this media thing here. And when you add it, it immediately asks you to choose what kind of media you want to upload. Uh, audio file, video file, picture, PDF, whatever. But you can click cancel and this will stay. And then when you go to student view, it stays as well. And so the student can click on it and add something from their computer. Um, but because this is a loophole, it doesn't really work the way it could work. So if the student chooses a wrong picture to upload, they can't undo it. Mm -hmm. They can only do it once. Like they can click on it, choose something, and that's it. They can't undo it. They can't delete it and upload a new thing. So mm -hmm. it's like you can add several <laughs> buttons for them to do. But I sometimes ask my students to do that. Like I sometimes ask them to upload mm -hmm. their pictures this way. Yeah, that's There's also a nice task of describing a picture, especially yeah. if you're doing some like a vocabulary topic. Yes, ask them to describe a picture and use writing, match picture to text. Mm -hmm. uh, or for example, you can have Five pictures, one listening. The students need to listen to the recording and choose the picture that corresponds to the recording. And the pictures can be similar but different. And so the recording only talks about one picture out of the three. So you, Sveta, is that clear? Yeah, uh, and uh, maybe you can uh, note down the idea I've used where you paid several pictures uh, on on the worksheet and then you add the table and um, do like uh, categories. So they have to write the words uh, from the images under the right column. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or uh, create a puzzle and maybe just uh, a part of object and they have to guess what object is it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like cut the part of the picture. Let's say it's a Christmas tree yeah? uh, and you just cut and um, paste the part of the tree and they have to guess mm -hmm. what is it. Mm -hmm. Girls, I'm and teaching I, I would... kids, so I'm, <laughs> I, my ideas are related to primary students. <laughs> Yes, yes. Svetlana here teaches kids and creates lessons for kids. So basically, that's why she asks questions. Kids needs a lot, need a lot of pictures. And so you need to come up with different yeah, because ways. Most of them are like visual. No, not just lessons. kids, like adults too. So that's why I was uh, thinking of brainstorming about um, visuals, uh, the way we can use it in the magazine. Mm-hmm. Well, unfortunately, we can't draw on a maze yet. <laughs> so that could be a cool thing, but we can't draw yet. We will, we hopefully will add a board sometime in the future. <laughs> last time, you, last time you, uh, your idea was great that we actually can paste, uh, I need teacher can paste a Jamboard link and ask the kids to draw, yeah. let's say the avatar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what else? I only use pictures to like illustrate things <laughs> <laughs> or like three pictures <laughs> match words to pictures or here's a picture and 10 words you can use to describe it and stuff like that. Do I use it for anything else? Well, okay, okay. Not for kids, uh, but I use images to break um, parts of the lesson. Usually they are very thin, very horizontal, and I just add them as a splash of color 
sometimes or as a break between the parts of the lesson like I really used to I really like to create um such uh division dividers I don't know like here in this lesson like there will be a lid in and it will be like a little poster and then some oh my 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 own picture is actually here that's me um and and like this so oh maybe you can add your own pictures to the lesson here's your teacher <laughs> Um, also, uh, again, several pictures and ask them, ask the students to write the story. Yeah, yeah, picture story. Picture story. Or um, write what the people in the picture are saying. Or doing for continuous. Yeah. Great, great, yeah. Picture. I was, I was confused with the question, to be honest. <laughs> Because, well, how to use on Amazio, how to use in your teaching? Because these are two completely different questions. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so both. Paulina, both, both. <laughs> <laughs> it's about how to use them in teaching, but specifically on Amazio. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, right. Yeah, well, can be yeah, bearing, bearing in mind that, um, let's say, in the matching activity, you can just uh, choose emojis, let's say. I mean, so the way we can play around, like how can we um, make amazing more visual? I, I mean, and user friendly for kids. Yes, well, amazing is not so user friendly for kids yet or at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's most it's not for small kids it's like not for super young ones i um, use pictures for lead-ins to generate the topic to create yeah. interest i always use uh, memes um, all the time almost for everything you can find a meme or you can create it yourself mm -hmm. uh, memes i like memes to illustrate grammar points if there is a meme with grammar. <laughs> GIFs. Don't forget about GIFs, by the way, Svera. Do you know that you can add GIFs to the lesson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yourself, right? Uh, oh, you can create it yourself in Canva. Yeah, and save it as GIF. I, d I haven't tried it anywhere else. I only know how to do it in Canva. But yeah. Let's add a GIF. so many cool gifs here this one i really like this one i think i have even used it in some of my lessons hold on you can just copy it copy image paste and you're done do you have somewhere the dimensions for the pictures that you can use like what's the size of a banner what's the size of a, a picture that you can use as a divider well, because I use oh wow well, no okay well because I um I use LinkedIn banner template okay uh for the uh, header mm -hmm. I will usually use banner template for the breakers for the mm -hmm. dividers and then I will use uh, if I go to Canva like I will just open a template I will use a presentation template and I will just save it as a picture or mm -hmm. I will save it as like a JPEG. Mm -hmm. or png file or something like that girls i'll have to excuse myself i'm teaching a class in five minutes <laughs> no problem for <laughs> thank you for the answers meeting. and see you in the chat see probably see in the chat yes bye, -bye. bye, -bye. thanks for joining okay yeah we'll let it load for a while and then it will work um memes jeeves lydians Teachers' own pictures, if that's not too wacky. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> Thank you, Pauline, again. Thank you. Good list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did we come up with 14 ways? But I mean, it's just, you know, how to use pictures in the lessons. We could continue probably how to just use pictures in lessons. 
on a Maisie though, specifically on a Maisie, you can just paste a picture and that's it. But then what you do with it is up to you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um well, we have two more questions here. Uh but the people who ask them are not present. So should we discuss them if you have the time we can stay on and discuss the two questions so that they can watch it later in the recording or if you don't have any more time we can end here i have some time sveta do you uh i do it's just uh so noisy here around i have to change the location <laughs> okay <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's do it quickly and briefly because we don't have the people to explain what they mean. So the first question is group management. So I don't really like what I can guess is how to manage groups in general. And do you teach groups online at all? Yeah, I did. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Teachers. Yeah. Okay. Do you have you tried teaching groups on Amazie? No. No, I, I don't think it's like how. I can. Like I mean I can explain how I do it. I use no, I understand. I need to have six uh tabs open simultaneously and it it doesn't work for me. I don't know. Yeah, it's easy on Jamboard. True, true, that's true. But then again on Jamboard, how how does it work? They all have access to the Thing. Yeah, they have access and they go to their board if they are working together. So they have number of the board okay. and they write it on a sticker. And on Amazie, if they forget to save it, I don't see it, right? And I need to it saves automatically it. actually on Amazie. And, they, and I have to update pages and blah. Oh, no. Yeah, that's that's yeah. true. So what basically I have this advanced level group on, uh, that I teach in Amazie, and although there are only two people, <laughs> so it's like a pair, not a group. So with high, with with many people in one group, it can be pretty tricky because you will have like six different copies in your shared file so that's true but if you have small groups up to three people i think that's doable absolutely doable and actually like it more than jamboard because they all like each of them is working in their own file like they would have a workbook or they would have their own student's book and as a teacher in offline you don't really have access to their student's book right or copy unless you collect it to check it and then you will do it individually one by one and that's the same what you do an amazing right so mm -hmm. you don't do it necessarily in class so i will have my lesson open in drafts they have their shared copies that they open i don't share my screen nobody shares a screen mm -hmm. and we just go over the lesson just as we would with, with the course book for example that's it and it's pretty easy and i can see what they've done if they've taken notes if they made any mistakes i just do it a bit later when i check their homework it doesn't matter we check everything together in class anyway so Mm -hmm. so the only yeah, problem i, I see is that you will have with, many copies yeah i think it works with a small amount of students yeah, right. yeah but i guess this person wanted like i don't know um, methodology tips or uh, technology tips in working yeah, well i guess i guess we can give only a general answer <laughs> to this question yeah, so be, because for example, I have the whole lecture on it. Uh, yeah. Everything. Okay. If you have a lecture, you can send me a link where it can be watched, and I'll just paste it here. I'm sorry, but it's a paid one. <laughs> just give me the link. They can buy ah, it if okay. they want to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> we and, support creators. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, so the main thing I can say I can say about groups. Uh, first of all, teachers need to let go and make a step back because teachers continue talking to each student individually where, when the idea of working in, is, in a group is when students talk to each other and teacher only uh, provides instructions, monitors and provides feedback, right? So you need to uh, make a step back and let students talk. And if you have more than four or five students, you need to uh, like come to terms with the, the idea that you won't be able to control everything. If you have three breakout rooms, yes, you won't be able to be in three of them simultaneously. And uh, of course you have to, I don't know, not check one room 
<laughs> when they are doing yeah. one exercise, you will yeah. go there uh, on the next round. And of course, don't forget about um, students working alone on controlled practice, check in pairs, then check uh, all together with the teacher. And uh, let students do the task. Uh, what I notice when it's about teaching groups, for example, students are doing the task and they have seven sentences, right? And student on Mira board or any other online uh, tool, they are doing the task and teacher is correcting this one straight away. So they are not letting them finish all seven. So they are, oh, are you sure? Correct it, correct it. Okay, just relax. Drink some water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you have five like, minutes to finish this task. Then we will have a class yeah. feedback. That's yeah, it. Yeah, to set the time limit. So ICQs are extremely important when you're working with groups. So you need to practice and uh, your instructions. They should be short and straight to the task. If this, is ta if this task has three stages, then just put it in stages. Don't provide all the instructions straight away this is what about the main ideas about methodology uh, mm -hmm. yeah that's true one thing that i struggle with in a pair like if i have three students it's so much easier for me than when working with a pair because with a pair they just they don't want to interact with each other i always have to force them i step back all the time but they just look at me and they interact through me you somehow the first teacher right. who says it's easier to work with three people because everyone says how do i work with three people where do i get the fourth person and for me it's like come on it's easier right they're talking three together yeah yeah, yeah. with three it's much easier than with two <laughs> <laughs> with three you can send two to the i don't know breakout room and then you stay with one student and do some kind of like individual feedback. And then you send it, you switch pairs or you send all three. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's just that with two, you don't send them to a breakout room because they're, they're, they're just two people, right? But you are here. So I just turn off my, mm -hmm. my camera and mm -hmm. my microphone. I'm not there. Right. Because if I'm there, if they see me, they don't talk, they don't interact. It's really hard to make them do that. So I have to force them. <laughs> I literally take myself away from the lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like this close to just, you know, leaving the conference. At all. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. OK. OK. Sveta, do you have anything to add about groups? If you teach groups, maybe have some experience with it. Probably. Give. I've never taught uh, on groups online. Honestly, yeah. Um, if there are kids, especially, <laughs> I have only individual students. Right. Okay. I don't want to know how to teach groups of kids online. I don't want <laughs> to know that. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> Thank you very much. My sanity is important to me. Okay. And the last one, teaching methodologies and innovation. And I think for this, I will simply paste some links to our previous newsletters and masterminds because we have talked about methodologies already and because the teacher is not here to elaborate. I think we can just stop here and, <laughs> and be done with it. So if we have no further questions, maybe something came up. Um, no. Okay. Yeah, I posted the uh, sent you the link with the webinars. Okay, yeah, let me do it immediately. Here it is. It's just if they want the precise Of course, of course. I... with groups. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Check out this webinar. Or hold on. Hold on. Why do I do this if I can do this? Huh? Pretty? <laughs> it just takes place, but it's, you see exactly. You see it. Yeah, exactly. And I will also make it stand out. <laughs> My All right. purple color. Yeah. I love purple too. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you very much for coming, for joining, yeah. for sharing, yeah. as always. Yeah. Um, I will see you next month. <laughs> if you come... <laughs> Are you coming to St. Pete to Trendy? Me? Yeah. No, I'm not in Russia anymore. Uh, maybe I thought maybe you're traveling. No, no, no. I am going to Barcelona, actually, uh, oh. where we, I will see <laughs> Sveta. <laughs> okay. Yes, we're going to Innovate ELT in Barcelona on the 20th of uh, May. 
And I'm going to give a workshop on how to use Maisie to provide theoretical. Oh, that's amazing. Work. And can we take part in it online at least? It's not online. It's an offline conference, unfortunately. But I, I am going to join some online conferences as well. And I will send you some links if I am yeah, sure. approved. Or I can generally just send you the links that I have for conferences that are yeah. happening online. Yeah, yeah sure. thank you. I'll actually just post them in the chat. Maybe other teachers would like to join. So, yeah. let's see. Mm -hmm. All righty. Yeah. Then um, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, see you in chat. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.